online activities and specifically online conferences are as real as anything else that we do either online or in the physical world. If you think about it, conferences are made of the organizers, the sponsors, the speakers, the exhibitors, and of course, most importantly, the attendees. There is a venue, and in case we are talking about rather than a physical conference, we are talking about an online conference, everything is the same. There will be an organizer putting together an idea why a conference should be held. There will be sponsors wanting to associate their brand with the idea and the fundamental message of the conference. There will be speakers either keynoting or putting together um, specific angles on a panel. There will be exhibitors who at a level that is uh, different from the sponsors are contributing to the success of the conference and want to promote their products on, or services. And there will be attendees that know that by learning what the conference is about, by listening to uh, the uh, speeches by the keynote speakers or attending the panels, will gain valuable information. The venue, rather than being a physical conference room, will be an online platform. So, obviously, the reason I am mentioning this is because it is not today something that happens in the physical world. Conferences have been cancelled worldwide, as they should, and uh, people are wondering what should be the next step. Digital is not opposed to real. Digital is opposed to physical, but digital is as real as physical. What is very important in order for this new mindset to take roots is to agree that there has to be an economically viable ecosystem that forms from the participation of the various stakeholders that I mentioned who must find the right model which makes the activities sustainable. There are many business models for digital ecosystems and of course online conferences can adopt one or another. The simplest is that sponsors, exhibitors and attendees pay and organizers, platforms and speakers get paid. And I am planning to help others make sure that this of the simplest business models gets tested as much as possible and that maybe more creative and sometimes a little more complicated business models get tested as well. Of course, I have participated over the course of many years in a large number of online conferences. And what I believe is that it is not only possible to move a lot of the physical conferences online, but that there can be a radical improvement in the value received and the, and the value created when we are rethinking what is the reason we are organizing these conferences and what is the reason we participate in these conferences and how those reasons can be supported with a natively online platform so that this value is multiplied manifold. First of all, of course, how are the materials collected, managed and made available to the participants. These materials 
are in large number already uh, digital. Uh, I remember 20 years ago, let's say, when I would participate uh, in, um, in a conference, especially, uh, you know, the trade shows uh, where, yes, there is a, a, a spoken track, but the exhibition is really preponderant. I would literally go around with a, with a hand cart and I would put brochures and leaflets in, in boxes and then I would fly home with boxes and boxes of literature that I would then sort and, and uh, act upon. And then little by little, all of this became digital. And today, whether it is a conference or a trade show, I walk around, I greet people, maybe I pick up a, a, a business card and hand over my own, but it is almost 100% guaranteed that I will not uh, take possession of a brochure. I will ask uh, the person wanting to hand it to me if a PDF version is available. So obviously, an online conference will organize the availability of the digital version of all the uh, relevant literature from sponsors and exhibitors in order to have the attendees be able to browse through them. But also the materials of the speakers. It is too often that uh, you participate in a physical conference and either because you organized some one-on-one -on -one meetings or because the conference itself is organized around parallel tracks, you miss out and you have to triage. You have to decide, do I want to go here or there? And you feel a little bit of FOMO, fear of missing out. So an online conference can be absolutely no FOMO because it should be possible to make available uh, the videos, the transcripts, and the materials, the slides of the speakers, regardless of whether the attendee was able to follow that particular talk live, or if they went back and said, okay, let me listen to the speaker afterwards. In general, if a physical conference is concentrated necessarily and naturally real time, the online conference has the luxury of manipulating the interaction both before the event happens and after the event official day is over so that the pre-event preparation and the post-event follow-up can be radically richer. Whether you want to make connections between speakers and attendees or among attendees uh, before the conference and slice and dice uh, this uh, demographic uh, by personalizing the uh, email communication to them or, or in other ways, or whether after the conference you want to make sure that uh, people uh, fill out the surveys, that uh, they provide feedback to, to speakers about the quality of the information they received, or there are specific action items that uh, uh, are measurably carried through. And of course, with the rethinking of the format and the understanding that online conferences can deliver great value, it is worth to rethink at a, an even more basic level. Why do you organize? Why do you attend? Why do you speak or exhibit at these conferences? Well, for sure, it is not for the pool 
or the beaches or the parties, it is and it must be for different reasons. And reasons that uh, can and, and will become clear, explicit, and measurable in terms of the value that they, that they generate. Often it is said that these conferences are great for making uh, connections and for establishing relationships. Well, online communities have existed for many years and those communities, once again, just because they are digital, they are not opposed or inferior to the physical ones. They are not less real. And that is what must happen with online conferences as well. The connections, the communities that uh, can be born must not be thought of as inferior as the ones that are born in physical conferences. And this is a guiding principle that I apply to everything that is done online. First, online is not opposed or inferior to uh, real. Online is an alternative to physical and it can be superior to a physical activity if structured in the appropriate way and measured for the value that it creates. Two, online activities must prove themselves and deliver complementary, different, potentially superior, measurable value than not the physical equivalent ones. A good example of this second principle is the way that you organize the work of teams. It is supposed and it has been supposed for many, many years that you have to be physically together in order to work. Today, there are a large number of organizations that not only allow remote collaboration, but actually there are teams that are born remote and they are structured in a way that they can provably organize valuable work as much as those teams that are physically together. But sometimes remote teams are born that wouldn't be possible if you pretended that those people work together physically in the same city, in the same space. And there are many reasons for this. The most important of them, I believe, is that you should not artificially, arbitrarily restrict the pool of talent and skills that you want to attract in order to apply their passion and creativity to a given mission and ambitious objective based on the silly criteria that they should be those who are already in a given city or who are ready to relocate there or who are legally allowed to relocate there. And I am excited and curious to see what is the future of online distributed teams is going to be. And I am excited and curious to see what is the future of online conferences going to be. I think that today the weakest link is the platform. We don't have a set of tools that deliver on the promise of an experience that can be delivering radically superior value to the various participants in the ecosystem as I described. So I would be curious to hear from you if you are aware of a set of tools and a set of platforms that are on the path towards this. And what are the um, pl 
pieces of the equation that we can analyze, describe and measure in order to achieve this goal of a sustainable ecosystem of online conferences. I'm looking forward to your input and thank you very much.